financing international humanitarian assistance is at an all-time high, according to data shared in the 2016 Global Humanitarian Assistance Report. In 2015, $28 billion was spent, an increase of $10 billion since 2012. In the last year alone, funding from government donors has increased by 11% and from private donors by 13%. However, there is a growing gap between available aid and need. In 2015, contributions to UN coordinated appeals reached just 55% resulting in a 45% shortfall, the largest ever recorded. Whilst these appeals don't track all aid flows, and although NGOs do not often participate in UN-coordinated appeals, this is a concerning trend. Let's take a step back for a moment and look at the 20 countries receiving the most assistance last year, as listed in the 2016 Global Humanitarian Assistance Report. International humanitarian assistance represented just 4.8% of all international funds arriving in these countries. A small percentage, but one which represents a huge amount of resources allocated for humanitarian and protection purposes. How does this money reach affected populations? In 2014, multilateral organisations such as the UNHCR, WFP and UNICEF received 52% directly from governments and private sources. NGOs received 31%. Let's call this group first-tier recipients. Often these first-tier funding recipients will partner with other organisations to deliver humanitarian aid. Let's call this group of implementing partners second-tier recipients. As NGOs, we operate as both first- and second-tier recipients, accessing funds from government donors, private donors, UN organisations and pooled funding sources. However, we face challenges accessing these funds. Some direct funding sources are limited to UN agencies only. Also, donor administrative requirements can be exhaustive. Time is also needed to build trust limiting the ability of local and national NGOs to access funding. In 2015, only 0.4% of traceable international humanitarian assistance went directly to local and national NGOs. Whilst this percentage is increasing, there is a long way to go. Session 1 of ICFA's Humanitarian Financing Learning Scheme will delve deeper into these important issues. To participate in our first webinar in partnership with PHAP and to learn more, Visit ICFA's website now.